The purpose of pre-screening a client is to essentially understand the individual's medical history and correlated risk contraindications that may cause the needs for supervised exercise or even deny medical clearance for the individual to participate in certain activities. It is vital that the client's health status is known by all practitioners involved in order to guarantee the client's safety in future exercise prescription. The following presentation will include a summary of the client's motives and future health, behavioural and exercise goals, as well as their relevant medical history and current physical activity status, which will be obtained through a variety of pre-screening tools. Furthermore, initial consultation notes will assist in identifying and evaluating the client's needs to achieve future goals, alongside practitioner goals and recommended action plan based on scientific evidence. The client, age 28, stated the motive for his appointment was to gain knowledge on how to achieve three main goals. The client states a relevant past medical history of bilateral patella tendinosis, of which is a recurring issue. On examination, the client's weight was 90.3 kilos and he reached a height of 186.5 centimetres. Blood pressure was 130 over 78, which is reasonably normal for, according to the UK Blood Pressure Association. His physical activity status is currently at a moderate to vigorous level based upon the ESSA pre-screening exercise intensity guidelines. In addition, the client completed the PARQ questionnaire alongside the ESSA pre-exercise screening tool. The diagnosed joint problem was identified as the one risk factor in both, thus making him a low-risk client. He can therefore participate in aerobic physical activity up to a vigorous intensity, although it is recommended that non-aggravating activities are elected and any pain is monitored. Based upon these observations, it is suggested that the client is safe to partake in exercise-related treatment. The client's current fitness goals are maintained due to enjoyment. Soccer is played socially, although the client is now ambitious to succeed further and in addition improve his cardiorespiratory fitness. Resistance training is something the client has always enjoyed and stuck to in order to increase muscle mass. Pilates has also been incorporated lately as a strategy to improve flexibility. From this, three main future goals were identified. These were categorised into health, behavioural and exercise performance goals as follows. The client's first health-related goal was to improve body composition by gaining 3 kilograms of muscle mass. The second behavioural goal was to be more committed to a specific exercise schedule, which he feels will be better through time management skills. And thirdly, the exercise performance goal was to improve his speed. In order to run 5 kilometres in under 25 minutes and upgrade his soccer skills. As a practitioner, it is important to facilitate further knowledge on how to achieve client goals, and so my aim is to provide the client with information that informs the further exercise prescription. This will include information on dropping body fat percentage, increasing strength, as well as providing recommendations on time management and inform a suitable trainer if needed. I will also recommend strategies on how he can improve his cardiorespiratory endurance to improve speed without affecting his muscular strength gains too much. Studies show that physiological and physical demands for a 5k run and soccer sets are similar. Evidence shows that midfield soccer players need to have maximal running speed and the lowest body fat percentage in the team in order to avoid excess weight during high intensity sprints. Although predominantly an aerobic game, anaerobic threshold has been shown to be highly correlated to performance in aerobic events, and so aspects such as body composition, cardiorespiratory endurance, and a balance between aerobic and anaerobic power are vital in evaluating successful soccer players. Likewise, Jung suggests that improvement in cardiovascular and muscular endurance performance may be achieved most effectively through the addition of shorter, high-intensity interval training sessions, and so it is advised that this training strategy is implemented into the client's regime in order to improve speed. Further evidence suggests that running performance may also be positively impacted by the addition of resistance training as it increases muscle work efficiency. It is therefore recommended that the client continues his current resistance training program, however allows for cardiovascular training and specifies each weight session according to his muscular hypertrophy health goal. According to Shipway and Holloway, Running will also assist in lowering body fat percentage through the loss of unwanted adipose tissue, which will, in essence, assist with the client's health-related goal to do so. They state that in order to increase muscle mass by 3 kg, yet remain lightweight enough to have sufficient speed, body fat percentage must be low. Essentially, it is recommended that the client continues to maintain yet specify their current resistance training program, however, ensure a high-intensity interval training is implemented also to ensure the benefits of anaerobic threshold has on aerobic capacity and speed. Furthermore, the client will set aside a certain time on Sunday nights to write a plan for the week. This may include notes about goals or just a timeline to ensure he stays well organised and committed. He will seek use of a trainer if needed and consult with them to stay motivated. It is recommended that the client undergoes 
weight management and skin fold testing prior to the commencement of this new schedule, plus 8 to 12 weeks afterwards to monitor progress. Ultimately, it's vital that the client undergoes further one-on-one -on -one consultations with a practitioner such as myself to learn further and understand more about specific exercise prescription to facilitate goal achievement and, in addition, monitor joint pain if needed. Thank you.